Well, aloha, everybody. Here we are, another Wednesday, Hawaii, the state of clean energy. This is sponsored by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. I'm really pleased to have uh, Don Probstel here today, good friend, and also he's the CEO, CEO of Natural Power Concepts, and he's going to be talking to us about microgrids for energy system, systems resilience, which is the resilience is the big buzzword out there now. It's actually more than a buzzword. It's something we have to have. And uh, the tagline uh, is conceived in Hawaii solutions for the world, because truly NPC develops uh, fascinating technology, which are actually solutions for the world. And Don's going to tell us a little bit uh, about how they're, what some of these solutions are and how they're projecting them out to the world. So Don, Welcome on board. Glad Thank to you. have you. Thank you, Mitch. I so, appreciate it. Yeah. I want to break the ice a little bit and just ask you to give a quick uh, little uh, some of your background, where you came from. And sure, sure, I can do that. Um, I've been in Hawaii now for seven years. Uh, I started uh, my relationship with um, this company that I am now the CEO of, Natural Power Concepts, yeah. twelve years ago when the company was founded by John Petrie. And I've known John Petrie, uh, in case the viewers aren't aware, John, I believe, has been on this show yes, several he times. Has. But he's, he's um, a very famous international artist and inventor. And uh, he has a kind of a long track record in successful inventions from um, the exercise arena uh, in light sport aircraft. And now he's been focused on renewable energy for about the last um dozen years or so at least and um i knew john i knew john uh many many years ago and i i helped advise uh advise him as he was starting his company and as you were an advisor in the early in the early days and eventually um i decided it was it was time for me to just uh come come to hawaii step in full time and it's been a it's been an interesting adventure over the right. last over the last seven years here full time. And we've made some interesting progress. So just a little bit of background on natural power concepts. It's a renewable energy technology developer. So John has, um, he has invented several uh, unique innovative technologies of, across a broad array of, um, of different technology arenas or resource arenas, but they're all focused on areas that are not being addressed right now by either big wind or solar. Most of the renewable energy industry right now focuses on those two arenas. Probably 90% of what's happening in renewables right now has to do with solar energy and big wind energy. So the NPC focus has been on areas that are not being tapped into. And if you look at the spectrum of renewable energy resources, it's very, very diverse. There's, there's energy from the sun, yes. There's energy from winds, yes. But there's ocean energy. There's hydro energy. Uh, there's many different spectrums. Geothermal is another great right. resource. That one is of my favorites. One of your favorite, I know. That's not being tapped into uh, very extensively. Uh, so that's been the focus of natural power concepts is to go into into those um, areas, come up with ideas, creative ideas, and uh, develop prototypes, and hopefully find manufacturing partners to take them to the next level. So speaking about getting the technology out into the world, you used to work for an organization in Washington called OPIC, which uh, has a broad reach throughout the world. You want right. to say a few words about that? It's great for your you know, background yeah. as a CEO here. Yeah, sure. Um, so my background is, is pretty diverse. I, I have a PhD in conservation biology, but uh, I also have a pretty high level of expertise in um, international development projects right. from the environmental and sustainability aspects. So I had, a, I had a stint in Washington at the Overseas Private Investment Corp, OPIC. Some people confuse with OPEC, which is a completely different animal. But OPIC is the uh, U.S. government agency that is analogous to the World Bank, to the um, International Finance right. Corporation, IFC. OPIC's mission is to invest in projects around the world and 
Interestingly, I believe, at least it was when I worked there, it's the only U.S. government agency that's been in the black. Um, so it was, a, it was a great experience, and it, um, I think it opened my eyes a lot to what happens um, to come up with funding, International right. Development Bank funding for big projects around the world. And I, uh, I tap into that resource a lot as, right. as we move along into how do we, how do we move our small little company with big ideas out of this island setting, which is very isolated. How do we, how do we migrate and populate the rest of, uh, of the world, which really needs clean energy solutions? Yeah, so Hawaii is really uh, are grateful for having somebody with your talents and experience here to help us get it out of the, uh, out of the lab and out to the world. So great background. So we have some slides. You brought some slides. It's not death by PowerPoint. So yeah, let's uh, start talking to some of the slides because okay. it, it shows some of the technology that we're uh, talking about. So can we have uh, the first slide up, please? So the first, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about John's uh, technologies, uh, mainly wind turbines. And uh, we're going to talk about wave. Uh, yeah, we certainly can. Um, we certainly can. Um, so as, a, as I mentioned, John is, um, he's, uh, not focused on one or two inventions. He has kind of a broad, diverse right. spectrum. Uh, the, the, the main focuses or foci that we're, we're on right now are distributed wind energy, which is small wind turbines. It's, a, it's virtually an untapped market around the right. world right now. And um, hydro energy, which we have some very unique devices that don't require right. dams to create hydro energy. And then additionally, the, uh, the third arena is wave energy. And right. John has a, a brilliant invention that takes, um, it basically puts buoys in a grid so right. that one mooring, and as you know, with your work at the WETS, at the WETS facility out there in Kaneohe, that one of the greatest expenses with, this, with these wave energy converters is the, is the mooring component. Right. So the concept with this wave energy technology invention device is uh, to be able to create energy from multiple buoys with one single more. Yeah, so yeah. We, we've just experienced a great expense, uh, several million dollars to put in one of our mooring. So exactly the point you made is like if you can you know, leverage that mooring and have hundreds of buoys attached to it, right. then that's, right. that's really good. And, I've seen John's uh, conceptual art and uh, some of his videos. He produces awesome videos yeah. which demonstrate the technology, which is really good for selling it out there in the world marketplace. Which you can see on our website, naturalpowerconcepts.com, if you, if you want to, if the viewers want to take a, a little spin on, on that website, you can see, see some of these images and videos right. and the technology in motion. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, Marine Corps base. So we okay. were out there at a workshop they had, what, about three weeks ago now? It seems like it was more recent, but I believe it's been about three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Mish, that was an interesting workshop. We had, uh, we had participants, a lot, of, a lot of Marine Corps people, but also people from the Navy, from the Air Force. Uh, and the theme of it, of the conference, was uh, how do we... How do we make our base and bases resilient to uh, what they called a punch, whether it's a natural disaster or some, you know, some man-made disaster, uh, maybe an attack, maybe, um, maybe a cyber attack? Right. So the theme was, how do, we, how do we structure the bases so we are braced for those punches? And how do we, number two, stay standing right. through that event and probably... Um, more importantly, from the military aspect, is how do we punch, or how, how do they, the military, how do, how do they punch back? Has to be a Marine program. You know, yeah. take the punch, yeah. you know, work your way through it, then punch back. I mean, it's awesome right. stuff. It was a great conference. I mean, I attended yeah. as well. It was over three days. And um, we also had quite a lot of industry there because you were there. So, you right. know, we had input from industry. And we were looking for solutions, and one of the, they want to be resilient for their critical loads for like 14 days. And if you go on the back of an envelope and say, say it's six megawatts, and you multiply that by 24 hours by 14 days, wow, that's a lot of megawatts. That's a lot of megawatt yeah, hours of energy required to keep that place going, and that's only for their critical loads. Right. I mean, then they have all the other non-critical loads. 
and um, and and they, I think they were very attracted to the NPC technology. And uh, what we're trying to provide right now with our um, we're in negotiations with Caterpillar. I can say that much that. Um, uh, we are in the process of developing modular, rapidly I'm deployable uh, energy uh, microgrid, energy microgrids, basically, right. that can be containerized, they can be rapidly deployed, they can be dropped in by air if they need right. to be. But what, for the great example, was the Camp, Camp Lejeune uh, commander that right. was at the at the conference, I mean, they're still trying to recover. It's over a year now, and they're trying to recover still, uh, you know, get back up to speed. And what was, um, what really struck me was their, their instantaneous need for just enough power to keep the food from going right, yeah. bad, to keep this communications open. They didn't have that vehicle. So right. that's what we're focused on. We're focused on uh, putting that modular vehicle together. And uh, fortunately, we've been able to attract the attention of Caterpillar. And um, I guess I can, I can say that we had, um, to develop, and this is for our wind turbines, uh, we had a, uh, a project supported by the Air Force Research Laboratory, AFRIL, that enabled us to build uh, two prototypes. We tested at Pearl Harbor Hickam. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of work, and we had some ups and downs and, you know, some learning curves and uh, some things to overcome, which we did. But at the end of the day, uh, we had a, um, an opportunity to demonstrate. There was a conference going on here, and Stan Osserman, I know the general, the general, general. general Osserman, everybody. Stan the energy man. <laughs> everybody knows Stan the energy man. Yep. Uh, Stan called me up one morning, and uh, at, that, at that point, our project was over, the turbines were shut down and stowed. He called me up one morning, he says, hey, we've got a group of people coming out today. Do you want to come give a demonstration? And I said, sure, Stan, I'll be right there. So I hopped in my car, went down, set up both of these turbines by myself in about an hour. Wow. Yeah. And by the time the 50 people came walking by, that were all attending this, uh, this energy conference here, um, one guy in particular stuck out to me because he had that caterpillar, how's that go, that caterpillar triangle on his oh, shirt. Right, and yeah. he goes, man, I want to talk to you about this thing. I've seen it, I've seen it somewhere before where, where it was, uh, there was a prototype developed by Oshkosh and I saw it at some, some trade shows and, and I think this should be a cat product. And I said, well, you just made my year. Yeah, right. And that opened the door to some negotiations which have been going on for a long, long time. It's a big company. It's taken right. a lot of talk and a lot of navigating, but uh, we're very close and we can't make a big public announcement yet, but we're hoping in the, in the very short term we're going to have not only some, uh, some good news, but also some great products that can bring... Um, a real viable solution to a big need for disaster relief for places that are um, located in areas that are prone to high winds, to hurricanes, island energy requirements, right. places that don't have energy now, like a lot of Africa, for example. Um, so that's yeah, kind of where global, it all evolved. And it, and it all started with a call from Stan and, hey, Don, can you come down and pop those yeah. turbines up? and Luckily, they go up and down very quickly as they were designed to. And, and there was some wind. And there was some wind, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't ask for better, better uh, luck than that. Exactly. So um, I'd like to uh, run through some of our slide deck because, you know, we've been doing a lot of talking, but sure. you have some awesome pictures. So we do. We might have to flip through some of them pretty fast no because we got a little bit off track. But can we start uh, running some of our slides, please? Thank you. So we can okay. go to the next one. So well, this is, we've talked about, this is just our profile. We're a, a technology developer. We're focused on unique untapped niches, uh, but I would emphasize the elegant practical approaches. That's because our founder, John Petrie, is a, artist. Is a world famous artist. Flip to the next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, what are we after? We're looking for missing pieces of the energy puzzle. And um, 
And I think that's, there's, a, there's a few really critical components that are missing, and especially for resiliency, which is the target for right. a lot of the military and disaster relief. And Hawaii needs resilience. Absolutely. So, for example, Absolutely. on my hydrogen buses, I'm putting in export power units because they're essentially electric buses. Right. I can provide backup power for 30 hours or 32 hours, and then I can come back and recharge that bus with more hydrogen, i.e. more energy, in about 15 to 20 minutes. So your whole bus fleet becomes a mobile, resilient energy uh, asset that you can deploy anywhere you need these assets. Yeah. Like your local drugstore, whose power is down, he's got a fridge full of uh, a medicine that's going to spoil unless it gets cooked up to a, you know, a power source. Drive that bus up there, plug Drive it in, person. and give them energy. I'm with you. And I heard another one today from the, the Big Island energy guy, um, their energy coordinator saying when they had all those trees blew down, the absilia trees, is it called? You're, yeah. you're a biologist. So it took them like three weeks to clear all those trees. Oh. And uh, if we had had, um, you know, these uh, export power units, they could have had electrically powered chainsaws because, you know, your gas stations all shut down. You can't pump gas. Right. So we're going to get the gas. Plug and play. If plug you have play. that mobile unit, you can, you can put it in. Yeah. yeah so. Could we throw a couple more slides up? I can give yeah. you a Give you an idea of what these look like. And uh, yeah, next slide. Let's scroll through these kind of quickly. There we go. There so we go. here we are at, at Pearl Harbor Hickam. We have on the, uh, the upper left, we have what we call the folding blade wind turbine. We're really happy with that. That's the one that Caterpillar is, is super excited about right at the moment. And standing next to it, we have a spoke wheel wind turbine. Both of these mechanically protect themselves uh, from high storm events. Uh, and on the, on the bottom end, we, we've negotiated a, a license with sprung structures that will put another, another kind of turbine, a ducted column turbine. And I guess the, the critical point, at least for the military, is every barrel of fuel that they save is, is an enormous value proposition because those barrels have the highest cost not only in terms of dollars, but also in terms of casualties. Exactly. Yeah, most of the, the highest number of casualties in the, the last two wars that the U.S. has been in Iraq and Afghanistan have been associated with transporting fuel. So every electron that you're able to, you know, to save and produce. produce where you need yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, it's very important. Next, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, we can punch through that one. Yeah, Nobody wants next. to get that business. Big market, uh, $1.9 over the next 10 years. And this is from a, um, a very reputable uh, market research group, Navigant Research, who I also happen to work with. I did a couple reports for Navigant many years ago. One On hydrogen and fuel cells. Well, it was hydrogen. Well, actually, one was uh, renewable energy in the military arena. Right. Big, big report for these guys. The other was renewable energy in the mining arena. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, another, um, another depiction of the turbines, but the one on the, on the bottom right shows you what we're talking about, this renewable energy module. It has solar panels that pop out. It has a wind turbine that pops up, and it becomes a plug-and-play recovery unit, and you can throw in water purification and cell communication into that. And you have essentially exactly what everybody in Puerto Rico wanted to have and right. exactly what they wanted at Camp Lejeune and exactly what they're going to want next year when yeah. the next round of hurricanes exactly. comes through. So on the bottom right, you see that the uh, turbine is folded over and that in the yellow uh, um, drawing is folded over onto a, a platform and you see that the, the sides of it are your, your uh, solar panels. Right, exactly. And that's what... Caterpillar is going to be building. That's what we're working on, right, okay. as we speak. And actually, Caterpillar has its own microgrid solutions division sure. that they've right. just come online with in the next few years. So we're integrating this uh, NPC device into that, right. <coughs> excuse me, into that entity. Okay. Next slide, please. So the unique things about these turbines, 
that are important. Um, they're stormproof, but more importantly for the military, there's no radar interference, yeah. so we can put these close to airports. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, next slide. This is a nice depiction of what this would look like look like at a forward operating base. So these, uh, these units uh, roll in either by aircraft or uh, in, in the standard Hemet trucks. They deploy and you can power a remote location. Right. And it's not only about the wind turbine, the wind turbine is a, is a component. And I've always told people that the storage component of this is it's a box. It can be a uh, lithium battery, it can be hydrogen, it can be, it can be a lot of different components. Sure. So once you throw the storage in here, you enable these to become very, very efficient. All right. Next slide. Next slide. Now we're going to talk a little bit about this one because this shows the whole solution. Yeah, this, this gives you an idea of um, what Caterpillar has right now is their microgrid solutions business unit and it it utilizes the backbone of the caterpillar genset which is um I, i'll say it's the best in the industry they have the largest market share mm -hmm. for for gensets uh, so they've used that as the backbone but they've integrated um solar and now we're, we're integrating wind and they have the control components, which is the really tricky part, is managing all these different sources. And at this moment, they have five different options for batteries. Uh, so they're very, you know, it's an evolving, this is an evolving um, entity right now. And I expect this, I expect this to make some big, some big waves around the world in the near term. All right. Yeah. And next slide, please. Well, that's it. Okay, so we have some contact information. This will be available online when they publish uh, this, uh, this episode. So, um, Don, um, you now have some partners, a really interesting guy. He's one I of do. your original we shareholders. Do, yeah. so, so why don't you talk about uh, Mark Victor Hansen sure, and, and his sure. uh, wife. Uh, so Mark Victor Hansen uh, was a founding investor in Natural Power Concepts uh, many years ago. He started off with... Um, with delivering a check to the pocket of John Petrie and uh, made the founding investment to get the company started. Mark Victor is famous for his, uh, his book series, Chicken Soup for the Soul, right. which has sold more copies than any other book in history, including he claims, which I believe, the Bible. Oh, really? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so he's, um, he's an interesting character. He started his... Um, he started another uh, company that is focused on delivering um, clean energy solutions right. to the world. So what, what Mark and his wife, Crystal Hansen, are attempting to do right now is to take uh, not only NPC technologies, but a, a lot of NPC technologies, and take new innovations and fast track them into, uh, into um, development projects that can actually end up with these things in people's hands that need them the most. Yeah. The thing I really like about, I like a lot of things about Mark Victor Hansen, but the fact is yeah. that he stepped up to the plate and stroked a check for a large sum. It was a large sum. Just like that, without a whole lot of, uh, you know, proposals and... There partners. was actually was no boom. paperwork, and I don't believe there was a receipt. I think yeah. what happened was the check got signed and deposited into Petrie's yeah. pocket. And that's what got... That's it started what got, the whole thing rolling. Yeah. And now we're, now we're finally getting to, a dozen years later, a lot of hard work by a lot of, lot of good people. Right. And uh, we're, we're coming to where we can... We can have some, some nice things come out of Hawaii and, and be delivered to the world. All right. Um, okay, so we have about two minutes left. So okay. uh, let's have some closing thoughts. Uh, I'd like them to come from you and not from me because you're the guest. So Certainly. why don't you uh, talk to us a little bit more about uh, going forward, what the challenges are. Yeah. And, um, and where you're going. Yeah, well, the challenges are, are always... Um, are always coming up with the hard resources to uh, to develop um, 
great ideas into, into hardware. And um, at this point, uh, I'm optimistic because we're going to get we're going to get one of our babies out of the out of the cradle and one of our one of our birds out of the nest and on its on its way. Uh, but I'm excited about about the other opportunities that are also there, the wave energy devices, especially. Uh, there's probably some long, um, some long time investment into into the wave energy right. in particular. Uh, but we're we're really optimistic, and we're grateful that we've had support by all our all our members and all our volunteers, like you have over the years, Mitch. That uh, that helped us push along. I know I know without without your support, we wouldn't have had uh, our opportunity with the Air Force to to get that contract in place. And you know, it's a it's really about partnerships and teaming and people working together. And I think we're all in agreement that climate change is a big issue. Sure. We've all got to step up and, and deal with this now. And it's not it's not hoping for for solutions. It's everybody stepping in and pushing together and making it happen. So we absolutely welcome yeah. welcome people to help. I'd like to give one other shout out, and that's to HCAT, yeah, uh, Stan Osserman, and DBED, who really managed that program with the Air Force. And obviously, the Air Force itself for investing the money and getting you your prototypes that were gee whiz and great yeah. prototypes that then, yeah. in the end, got you your uh, relationship developing with CAT. Absolutely. You Absolutely. couldn't have done it without the support of our military and without the support of DBED and HCAT. So, um, I couldn't agree more. And, and a uh, shout out to General Osserman for all the great things he's done and continues to do. Right. His, he's, he's, walking, he's walking the talk for sure. He really does. Yeah, so. He does. So that's it for our show to, uh, today. So, uh, Don, thank you so much. My really pleasure, appreciate Mitch. it. Yeah, You're doing a great job. I'm Keep it up. On. Good for Hawaii and good for the world. So thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. Aloha. Aloha.